In today's lesson from the Microlearning Institute, we look at Bowman's strategy clock and we look to make sense of the eight competitive positions on Bowman's strategy clock identified by Bowman. This model of corporate strategy explains the cost and perceived value combinations many firms use, as well as identifies the likelihood of success for each strategy. Visually, Bowman's strategy clock is often presented like this, with price on the x-axis, again ranged between low price and high price, and on the y-axis we have the perceived value as perceived by the customer. And again, the range here is notionally from low to high. And the clock presents eight positions, eight combinations of price and perceived value, and gives us some advice on each of those positions. Firstly, let's look at position one. And position one is here in the bottom left-hand corner, where we look at low price, low perceived value to the customer. This is the bargain basement bin, and not a lot of companies want to be in this position. Companies find themselves forced to compete in this position because their product lacks any differentiated value. The only way to make it or to be successful here is through cost effectively selling high volume of product and by continually attracting new customers. Products are inferior but the prices are attractive enough to convince consumers to try them once. Next, let's look at position two here, where again we have low price, but here we have medium perceived value to the customer. In this position, companies competing in this category are low cost leaders. These are the companies that drive prices down to bare minimums and they balance very low margins with very high volume. If low cost leaders have large enough volume or strong strategic reasons for their position, they can sustain this approach and become a powerful force in the marketplace. If they don't, they can trigger price wars that only benefit consumers as the prices are unsustainable over anything but the shortest of terms. Walmart is a key example of a low price competitor that persuades suppliers to enter the low price arena with the promise of extremely high volumes of activity. Next, let's look at position three, where we have again a pretty low price, but we're offering the consumer here uh, a perceived high value product. And this is called the hybrid position. And hybrids offer products at a low cost but offer products with a higher perceived value than those of other low-cost competitors. Hybrid companies build a reputation of offering fair prices for reasonable goods. Examples of companies that pursue this strategy are discount department stores. The quality and value is good and the consumer is assured of reasonable prices and this builds customer loyalty. Next, we look at position four, where we have a mid-range price, but some very high perceived value to the customer. This is called differentiation, and companies that differentiate offer their customers high perceived value. To be able to afford to differentiate, companies either increase their price and sustain themselves to higher margins, or they keep their prices low and they seek greater market share. Branding is important with differentiation strategies as it allows a company to become synonymous with quality as well as price point. Nike is known for high quality and premium prices and Reebok is also a strong brand but it provides high value with a lower premium. Next, let's look at position 5 on the clock which again we're looking at higher prices now but also perceived high quality as perceived by the customer. And this is referred to as focused differentiation, where we have high perceived value and higher prices. Consumers will buy in this category based on perceived value alone. The product does not necessarily have to have any more real value, but the perception of value is enough to charge very large premiums. Position five, 
in position five, we have companies like Gucci, Armani, Rolls-Royce, highly targeted markets and high margins are the ways these companies survive. Next, let's look at position six, where again we have high price, but now we only have average perceived value by the customer. And again, sometimes companies increase their prices without any increase to the value side of the equation. And when the price increase is accepted, the companies enjoy higher profitability. However, when it isn't, their share of the market plummets until they make an adjustment to their price or value. This strategy may work in the short term, but it is not a long term proposition, as an unjustified price premium will soon be discovered in a very competitive marketplace. Next, let's have a look at position 7, where again we have high pricing, but now quite low perceived value to the customer. And this is referred to as monopoly pricing. This is classic monopoly pricing in a market where only one company offers the goods or services. The monopolist does not have to be concerned about adding value because customers need what they offer and will pay the price. Fortunately for consumers in a market economy, monopolies do not last very long. Lastly, let's look at position 8, where again we're offering medium prices but very, very low perceived value to the customer. And this is low value at a standard price. A company that pursues this type of strategy will lose market share. Thank you very much for watching this short tutorial from the Microlearning Institute on Bowman's Strategy Clock.